Hey, hello YouTube. Setting out to create a meaningful video and using Google Trends for the first time. My intent was to research problem areas within FreeCAD, with FreeCAD as a base word, and then a wildcard thereafter. Unfortunately, curiosity had got the better of me, and before I could work that out, it appears that this year's top 100 YouTube searches are what you see scrolling up on the screen. So, I don't even know what 95% of those items are, but literally millions of people are searching for them. And to be honest, I was expecting a list similar to something like this. Imagine what kind of world it could be if one, all of these problems and others were kept as an open source project. Two, we all made one or two of these problems a personal project. Three, time spent on these projects was tax deductible. Nine out of ten of these problems can be solved with a process, a machine, software, or software and AI, or a combination of all. Governments around the world just can't keep up. They suffer the same problems as private industry. The problems of people and funds. That's why I reiterate that the open source ethos needs to go further than just software. Governments need to recognise open source projects and give motivation to individuals and organisations alike to problem solve at their own pace and value that time with tax deductible incentive. Rising like the phoenix into a repairing society, perhaps the will to do and be more would eventuate because at the moment, fear and oppression, I would suggest is making the problems worse. Certainly YouTube search results indicate that no one actually cares too much about what really matters. The question is, can capitalism and democracy exist within or alongside a partial open source society? I do not see why democracy couldn't. And attempts, as you know, have already begun to undermine currency with other currencies. There is a system in Australia on Norfolk Island where goods are traded by excess. They give what they don't need. Perhaps what we need is a split system whereby 50% of the time we barter and 50% of the time we use currency. Inflation was kept in check for millennium with the barter system. And there goes the tax system. We need a tangible incentive for people to get involved with open source. Perhaps the open source community needs its own currency. To be honest, I was lost at carbon credits. So another currency might not be exactly what the world needs, but I do know what we are doing is destroying us all. There needs to be big rapid change where people proactively focus on the essential problems. Mainstream media won't touch anything that doesn't sell product most of the time, which brings me to the point that I'm trying to make for this video. Just because a product is free, it doesn't mean it doesn't need a sales and marketing effort. The point of sales is to sell the dream and marketing to actively seek out potential clients. How do you expect to get a bite if you fish in a river without fish? Even though a fellow student pointed out Blender in my college years, I was literally brainwashed by the corporations. Please allow me the honour to inform you that when your money runs out, so does your subscription. And everything you knew or learnt is useless. 
Open source will never expect more from you than you are willing to give. And it's absolute madness not to educate you and your family on open source alternatives. So let's begin this quick demonstration of FreeCAD with a coin tutorial. That way I can say I've made money with FreeCAD. The first thing to do is import the picture via the file menu and the import. Once the file is imported, double click on this icon in the tree to open up the picture dialog box. We can then calibrate the distance for the diameter. If your file is a PNG with an alpha channel, removing the background and utilizing transparency makes things a little neater. In the properties, change the bounding box setting to true. And don't worry if your UI doesn't look exactly like mine. It's just a matter of going to the tools menu, the add-on manager, and installing glass and the modern UI. The next step is to head over to the part design workbench. Create a body, create a sketch on the same plane that the image resides, and we can turn on the body's origin or the local coordinate planes via the body icon in the tree. The space bar is a toggle. Once the sketch is created, switch over to the sketch workbench. Then it's a simpler matter of selecting as little as possible to get the shape constrained. In this case, I probably should have relocated the picture's circle origin to the origin of the global coordinate system for ease of construction, but no matter. The local coordinate system which resides in the body and the global coordinate system origins are created in the same spot by default. But all things can be moved, except for the global coordinate system. Create two circles, make them concentric via a coincidence constraint at their centers. I'll use a line down the center to assign symmetry constraints. It's locked into place by a third point on object constraint. Also, it's changed to construction geometry. The two angle lines will have an automatic point on line constraint at the ends, but we'll assign a symmetry constraint to the top and bottom of the points, referencing the construction line. Add an angle constraint to the two lines we just created, visually referencing the picture. And as we have still have four degrees of freedom, we can drag the geometry around a little to also match the picture's geometry as best as possible. Then it's just a matter of adding a combination of horizontal and diameter constraints until the sketch turns green. Then trim the edges we don't need. Close the sketch on the dialog box and head back into the part design workbench where we can extrude the closed shape. And voila, we have an open source coin. Well, perhaps a blank coin at least. What you're looking at here is a four bar linkage mechanism that has been designed top down and parametrically. There is also an animation control on the design screen, not the typical animation section of a CAD program which makes editing in context inherent. What you can notice about four bar linkages is, is that there is a complex movement to achieve the desired range of the yellow piece, and in this case, 90 to 180 degrees. Also, notice that the lower linkage changes direction in steps one to two, and then two to three. Huh, I hear you say. The important thing to remember is that there is only one control, one linear control with 10 steps, which also can be modified if desired. Top down drafting is much faster than bottom up design. If you were designing bottom up, then you would have to find the part, edit the file, refresh, and run the animation. Then take measurements, modify till you get it right. This can be a vicious circle. Parts linked to other parts can break, animations can fail, and this is true for almost all CAD software. Is FreeCAD ready for industry? In many regards, excluding the obvious facts that it's free and private, it's at the same time a lot better and a lot worse than all other software. Huh. Well, first, the better component. 
It's free. And I'm not talking about the numerical value. It's free to turn into whatever you desire. And as you can see, my UI is very modern and functional. Having the tree and the properties next to one another gives me quick and easy access to the information. And not having to scroll constantly across the screen, making a long day less longer. I'm really happy with this setup. And with a scrollable mouse, my shoulders are relaxing a lot more than the old way of doing things. However, some veterans will swear by the old UI. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. And now the worst part. And this is the part you can't see. Because besides the basic training an operator must undergo to learn any CAD package, at the moment, FreeCAD has a few other layers of frustrating not visible to the naked eye. It's stalking the next victim. The first is the TPN, the topological naming problem. And long story short, it's a big correction, huge mm, correction, massive bug that gets geometry mixed up. And I really can't simplify it more than that. However, there are ways around it. And I'm not about to sugarcoat it. It takes a lot of practice. <sighs> a lot of practice. Really, CAD operators and industry don't have the time to learn this. But look out. Free CAD version number one, when the developers really the first version of TPN free, free CAD. The second frustration a new user to free CAD will face is the setup of the program. The workbenches can be convoluted to navigate. The developers tend to individually own a workbench and collaboration on combining obvious workbenches together is perhaps still a new concept to the very ideology. I suppose developers are also free compared to industry where a common goal is a make or break objective. I hope you enjoyed this video. My intent was not to propagate rubbish but to raise an eyebrow or two, a little change could make a big difference. So I thank the viewer for considering a little change. And I thank the developers for being one step ahead. Imagine if we were all one step ahead.